And the big story today, TKO, parent company of WWE and UFC, has agreed to a settlement in a pair of class action lawsuits that have been in process for a decade. Settlement that will see the former pay out $335 million to former fighters. News was revealed Wednesday via an SEC filing. Settlement for both Kung Lee and versus Zufa and Kajan Johnson versus Zufa came on March 13th and is a far cry from the $1.6 billion that was originally sought for by plaintiffs like Lee, Nate Quarry, uh, Nate Quarry, Brandon Vera, Kyle Kingsbury, John Fitch, and others. Originally filed by Lee in 2014, antitrust suit included as many as 1,200 fighters that competed in the UFC at least once between December 16, 2010 and June 30, 2017, and did not opt out of the suit. They collectively sued the UFC for lost wages and back pay, claiming the UFC signed them into long-term agreements and then bought up all of their competition, stifling the market. Difference in the two cases is that while they are similar in nature, they came at different points in time, with the Johnson case coming after fighters had signed waivers against part of a, uh, being part of a class action lawsuit. Johnson case was also looking for injunctive relief in addition to damages, which would have changed how future contracts could be written. The Lee case was seeking just damages. How the money is distributed among the 1,200 fighters is unknown as of now. Industry reporter John Nash speculated there will likely almost be zero damages for Johnson because most signed class action waivers. The UFC announced that the $335 million will be paid out in installments over time and is likely to be tax deductible for TKO. After news of the lawsuit broke, TKO stock rose $5.8609 as of this writing. And uh, there's more on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. If you go to any of the MMA websites, you can read more. Now, here's my take on this. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So they threw around a lot of big numbers. $1.6 billion, triple damages, $5 billion. Remember these crazy numbers they were throwing around? Mm-hmm. And I asked this question a long time ago. And I'm not going to sit here and say I was right. But I asked the question... And now I think that I asked the right question. And the question is, okay, would I have liked Filthy Tom to have been paid more? Of course. Do I think all of these fighters deserve more? Of course. Okay. Did did UFC underpay them? Was that wrong of them? Were they were they jerks to pay them as little as they did? Well, of course. Okay. However, this is a legal case. And we've been dealing with a lot of legal stuff of late which has made some people very mad, but we're dealing with a legal issue here, okay? If I own a McDonald's and the minimum wage is $15 and I hire a bunch of people and I'm paying them 7 bucks an hour under the table, hiring 8-year-olds, whatever, okay? I'm breaking a lot of laws. What I'm doing is illegal, Okay. In the case of UFC, they offered X amount of money to these fighters. The fighters agreed. They signed a contract. There is no minimum wage for fighters. Okay? Is what they did illegal? Is it illegal to pay them what they paid these fighters. That was the question that I asked. It's not a question about was it was it like the right thing to do? Was it the nice thing to do? No. Were they were they jerks? The question is is it legal? Okay? And at the end of the day, when I look at what TKO paid out, 335 million, okay? And keep in mind, this is not 335 million for each of those lawsuits, this is $335 million total for both lawsuits, okay? What that tells me is that the belief was, from the fighter side, that I don't know if we're going to win this thing if this goes to court. And obviously, UFC didn't want it to go to court because they don't want all of this information and there was a lot that was that already came out like a lot of text messages and you know a lot of i mean a lot of stuff came out they didn't want coming out and so so my guess is that at the end of the day you know the fighter side figured i don't think we're going to win this in court but 
we settle, we can get a lot of money. You know, three hundred thirty-five million is still a lot of money. And you know, TKO was happy to just get out of this with three hundred thirty-five million. I'd have to open up the books or whatever. And uh, and I think that's what happened here. So uh, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, they can still pay fighters whatever they want. I mean, there was nothing that was ruled where you know you have to pay them X amount or whatever. So you know. I would say that if I were a fighter, I would be quite disappointed in this. And the idea of, you know, everybody's going to get millions of dollars or whatever. I mean, I also don't know how everyone's going to get paid. Like, is is this going to be split equally? Is Filthy going to get the same payout as Conor McGregor? Is it some sort of, you know, if you were somebody that was paid more? I, I don't know how they think this is going to work. Nobody does. But at the end of the day, I mean, even if they split it like boom, 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 everyone gets the exact same amount. I mean, you're talking maybe 100,000, a couple hundred thousand per fighter. So they did not come out of this really as winners, I don't think. Well, you get a little over 200,000 or something. I'm terrible at math. I'm not going to ask you to do it because you're terrible as well, too. But that's without the lawyers taking their chunk off the top of this as well, too. You know, you got to factor that in. Um, we have to see. Look, the, the, the answer is unionize. The answer is unionize, and they're not going to because of promises where you could be Conor McGregor. You could make so much money in this that you could, you know, completely act a fool at any moment in time. And even he took on boxing Floyd Mayweather and doing other things to make more money because you are limited in what you're going to make in UFC. So it's either if it's not unionized, the only thing you can really do is get better representation and try to increase your star to a point where they need you in the same way that they need a John Jones or a Conor McGregor or a very, you know, handful of other people. That's about the best you can do at this point. And that's the same goes for WWE because in wrestling, the same thing goes. And there, I, to me, they have even more of a reason to do it now because you have agents, you have Endeavor that now owns this company. If now, and the way they look at things as being part sport and part entertainment venue, you can easily, to me right now, it would be probably the best time to unionize, but they won't because you can't get enough people to get on board, especially those at the tippy top that are benefiting from the system that's already in. So I don't know if there's a really ever going to be an answer to this because there never was an answer in boxing as well, too. And again, they're all from the same family tree. And I think the other issue on the fighter side is that at the end of the day, they were trying to argue that we were signed to these restrictive contracts, and then UFC bought all of these promotions, and they were a monopoly. And I think as we all know, I mean, that's pretty hard to argue that, like, if I left UFC, I couldn't fight anywhere. I mean, there were multiple organizations where you could go to, to fight. And, you know, some of these some of these people left UFC and, weighed, and made way more money in these other organizations. I mean, it's just... I don't think that they were confident in in their case going to court, and that's why they settled for, you know, a fraction of what people had suggested they were going to get out of this entire thing. That's the story. That's pretty much it. Uh, you we'll know, talk to we'll Tom see. about this tomorrow. Yeah, it's been estimated about uh, one hundred ninety-five thousand. If they if they split it equally amongst all of the fighters. It would be one hundred ninety-five thousand. But is again, are we factoring in what the lawyers are going to take off the top? Of well, yeah, and we also don't know. Are, you can go ahead and take probably thirty percent of that and knock off thirty percent from there. Maybe you and you've go got ahead. taxes that you have to pay off that yeah, uh, settlement. And, so. and does D Dimitri or not Demetrius Johnson do Quarry and Lee and others? Will they get more of a lion's share because they have evidence of this or that or something like that? So. Yeah, it's going to be real interesting to see what filters down to everybody that's a part of this thing. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.